Oh, hey guys. Today is episode 21 of the Frame of Life podcast, and I am answering a Instagram DM question I got earlier this month from a fellow business owner who hosts a podcast and is stuck on how to manage her digital files. I thought that this would be a great opportunity to bring this to the podcast and give you some ideas for the creative business owner out there. If you host a podcast, if you manage an Instagram profile that you are sharing a lot of content and you are getting overwhelmed by where to find everything and how to keep track of it, this episode's going to be for you. Before we dive into the episode, I feel like this is a good time to remind you that I'm always hanging out over on Instagram at Frame of Life Project. You can feel free to DM me and we can chat about any questions you have that come up from this episode. Or if you have any questions that you want me to address on another podcast episode, it's a great place to pop into my DMs and let me know what you're struggling with and how I can best help you. As a creative entrepreneur myself and a pro photographer and videographer for small businesses, I have had a lot of experience helping creatives manage their assets that they have to share their business. So we do this through photo and video and then helping people create content plans for Instagram on social, other social media outlets, and then on their website. When we do that, it's important for us to have a plan. I wanted to walk through how we go through our content creation plans and give you an idea that you can maybe implement to make finding your digital files easier down the road. So without further ado, let's dive into the episode. So the question today really centers around what to do with all of the content that you film and how to organize it so that you can find it when you have it and you need it. So my clients are often small business owners who are selling products and services either in person or just through e-commerce online, or they're brands that are just trying to tell a story and want to connect with their followers but they create lots of content and they don't know how to find it when they need it. So I wanted to give you some tips for managing your photos as you take them. It starts with the first question you need to ask yourself. Why are you creating the content that you're creating? With a goal in mind, you'll be able to go back and figure out exactly what kind of albums you should create and what the best way to share your photos are. For instance, if you're a business that has a product line that is, say, the Stanley like your Stanley Tumblr here, for example. If you're just selling one product and it doesn't change by season, but you have many different functionalities of this that you want to focus on, you could create different albums about this specific product that you have. You could just have detail shots of the product. You could have lifestyle photos of the product. You could have users engaging in the product, user-generated content. You can focus on setting albums based on the name of the person who's submitting content for you. So if you have people using your product that are creating reels for you and then giving you the content, you can take that content and put it into an album by that person's name and then by the date and year that the year and date that content is for. Inside file naming, I love to make sure that people are using keywords in their naming structure. This works particularly if you're on a computer and you're using an external hard drive to manage your photo collection. That way you would want to just rename your files so that you can find them by searching them. So for if you're using the Stanley example again, you would go in and name this content gear. So it'd be Gear Lou 2024 Stanley content. And that would be how we'd start. You could search then from within your files for Stanley, my name, and those images would pop up. If you're just using your phone to manage your photos, it's really helpful to just um, start throwing things into albums. If you're, whether you're an Android user or if you're a Mac user, an Apple iPhone, you can use albums to start sorting the images into it. Same technique would work. You would go and pick a naming structure. So if we are just using names of people who are submitting the content to you, you could put it in an album with my name, for example, and then all of those pictures I've taken are in there. If you're a podcaster and you're trying to manage photos that are coming in by episode by different topic that are happening you could start organizing your images into albums by episode name or you could just create a general album on your phone for your podcast and it would go in sequence by date so you can cycle through and see it if you're recording your episodes in badges and you're getting assets for individual podcast episodes all at once that like can get jumbled up that's maybe a time that you want to use separate albums for your podcast. 
I would just use a similar naming structure that would let you know that it's your podcast and then either underscore or a space and say what episode number or episode title it is so that you can search within your search function to be able to find it. On phones, there is a search bar, (laughs) believe it or not. So if you're inside your photos app, you can swipe down and there should be a search bar that pops up on the top. In there, you can use keywords to find images that you're looking for. A lot of technology is going into AI in the back end of our iPhones, in Google, that will help you pull up photos even if you haven't done a fancy keyword to it. So you could look up Tumblr or water bottle or something like that to describe the Stanley thing that you're talking about or straw, something that is photographed in it that AI might pick up on and it'll pull those images for you. And then you could take those images that it finds that are relevant and add them to an album so that you can find them later. I like to do every year have an album so that it makes it a little bit more manageable as content changes throughout the years. So I would do 2024 content for Frame of Life and have it there so that all of my content is cycling in there. It's really helpful using keywords, though, to describe what's going on. One way to do that is inside your phone, you can I can try to show you inside here. If you go to your photos app and you take a picture, for example, you can Swipe up on the picture. Let's see if it'll do it. Swipe up on the picture. And there's a, if this is on an iPhone, there's a place where you can add a caption. And in here, I could write details about what's in this picture that AI might not pick up on. I could say that this is my son on a beach and name the beach where we're at, what he's holding, what he was looking for, describe the story behind the image, add a little bit more detail here that will help me have facts that go with the photo. Everything I write in here can be used in the search function so that it'll start pulling those images up. You can also create notes. This is going back to being an iPhone user because that's where I'm most familiar with. But you can create a note and add a picture to that note. So if, for example, you're a podcaster and you have an episode on the Stanley, we'll just keep the Stanley going. I could have in the notes, I have a folder called Frame of Life. And inside Frame of Life, I have another folder called Podcast. And in Podcast, I have episode. 22 with Stanley. And in Stanley, I have pictures and I can load pictures from that into there so that I know where they are. It'll help me reflect on what the date was and I can go back and search my camera roll for it. If you back up your images from iPhone to Google or Amazon, there's additional AI built into those services. I find that Google has the best AI for when it comes to looking for photos that you're trying to find. So I would throw them in there. If, if it's automatically backed up, your images are there um, and you can search in there and maybe find a few more pictures that maybe your Apple phone or if you have a different kind of phone, it didn't find. You can find them in Google. So those are some quick tips I have for just getting your pictures managed on your phone and having a system. The other thing that I love to do is use my photo collection tracker. It's available as a Google spreadsheet so you can link to where the source of your images are. So if you are getting photos in business from multiple different sources, or you're trying to organize them, you can use inside the Google suite um, different folders to store them in. So you would have like a marketing folder and inside the marketing folder, you'd have branding photos and you could describe what the photos are of. So if it's your product, you could say Stanley, and then you could have Stanley 2024, the pink version, (laughs) and then have photos go in there and, and then link that folder to your photo tracker spreadsheet, and then you can find them that way. It's a good way to just start getting in the habit of having one place for your photos to go and then tracking where you've left them. And you can easily integrate this into your process of onboarding different images that come in. So every time you get photos from your photographer, you can load them to that same folder and link that folder to your photo tracker spreadsheet, and you'll be able to find them. Um, And you can also make sure that if someone is sending you images, you can ask them to name the images with their name and what the product is that's documented. So a lot of times with my clients as a branding photographer, I will send out images that we've captured in any given month. I have some clients that come to me every month and we photograph three or four different products or different scenarios. And every time I ask them, what's what's the name of these four products that we're documenting? I use the name of the product in the file name of the image that we capture. So if we're doing like wrapping paper this month. I will say pansy wrapping paper or whatever the name of that wrapping paper is in my descriptive name for my file. And 
then that image, when I transfer it to them, is searchable by the name of the paper and they'll be able to find it much easier. One thing that also helps is having a content plan when you go and start capturing images or when you are asking someone for images, say for your podcast. So I like to make sure that I'm always asking for a headshot and a lifestyle picture of them, something where they're doing something they love. It's usually just two pictures. So I know that every podcast episode, I'm going to have one or two pictures attached to that episode and I keep it within that episode folder. If it's a business, I like to have a structure to the pictures that we're taking. So we will make sure that we have a, a purpose for what we're taking pictures of. So we are either trying to show behind the scenes or build connection with people or share facts about our product that makes it different or that it's a tip or a trick and showcases our work in some way. So we'll use those content pillars to make sure that we have pictures of that and then we can use those content pillars as folders or albums either in our phone or on our external hard drive to load pictures too. So every time I take a behind the scenes picture, I could load that picture to that behind the scenes album, either on my hard drive or on my phone. That makes sense. <laughs> so it's just important to have some sort of a plan for what you're doing and just follow it. And then it gets easier. <laughs> So I hope that answers your question this month, dear listener. Thank you for submitting your question. If you have any questions after this episode, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram in my DMs at Frame of Life Project, and I would love to help you in the future. Thank you so much. 